Welcome. This briefing provides an overview of the Air Traffic Organization's Safety Management System, also known as the ATO SMS. It's critical for executives and managers to have an understanding of the SMS in order to fully support and strengthen the Federal Aviation Administration's FAA's robust safety culture throughout the organization. The purpose of this briefing is to inform ATO executives and managers on the importance of why the ATO completes SRM for changes and existing safety issues across the NAS. By the end of this briefing, you should be able to describe the importance of the ATO SMS to various stakeholders and identify strategies to promote a robust safety culture. Review the references for this briefing. Review the references used in the creation of the Deep Water Horizon video contained in this briefing. The ATO SMS is a formalized approach to system safety. The FAA's mission is to provide the safest, most efficient aerospace system in the world. Encouraging employees to recognize unsafe conditions and situations in an effort to proactively manage risk is a leading indicator of a transparent and strong safety culture. If employees are encouraged to participate in identifying and treating safety challenges, they are better prepared to prevent hazardous situations that can lead to catastrophic accidents. The ATO SMS is an integrated collection of policies, programs, processes, and procedures used to identify and address safety hazards in the NAS. The ultimate goal of the ATO SMS is to maintain an acceptable level of risk within the ATO's provisioning of the following services. Air traffic management, communication, navigation, and surveillance. The ATO leads the FAA in the implementation and continued maturity of the SMS. The ATO SMS provides a formalized, repeatable, and systematic process to identify and manage safety risk, reduce isolated analysis and decision-making, and ensure that all stakeholders are accountable for safety. The ATO SMS holds the ATO accountable to the same level of safety that the FAA requires of the aviation industry. The ATO SMS is made up of four components, safety policy, safety promotion, safety risk management, and safety assurance. The key to successful implementation of the ATO SMS is a robust safety culture wherein all stakeholders in the system communicate effectively and work to support all four of these components. Safety culture is defined as the way safety is perceived and valued in an organization. Safety policy is the foundation for every step that is taken to ensure the safety of the NAS operational environment. It serves to formalize processes and procedures that are already in place. Safety policy is socialized through safety promotion. This is the communication of information to ensure the safety of the NAS. Safety promotion fosters a positive safety culture in which ATO employees understand why safety is important and how they affect it. Safety assurance is the performance-oriented component of the SMS. Safety assurance entails collecting and assessing data to assess performance of safety measures and to identify safety trends. Safety Risk Management, SRM, is the process that is used to identify and address safety risk with regard to air traffic management and communication, navigation, and surveillance services. It is a common misconception that SMS and SRM are synonymous. However, SRM is only one component within the ATO's SMS. SRM complements safety assurance. There is a closed-loop system between SRM and safety assurance. 
identifying safety hazards associated with a NAS change and addressing those hazards via SRM make it possible to proactively detect sequences of events where system deficiencies could lead to an incident or accident before it actually occurs. Safety assurance includes monitoring operational data, analyzing the system, and reporting safety issues to analyze the chain of events that led to an accident or incident. SRM and safety assurance would not be effective in managing NAS safety if they worked in isolation. SRM is the process that is used to identify and address safety risk with regard to air traffic management and communication, navigation, and surveillance services. Remember, SRM is only one component of the ATO SMS. SMS and SRM are not interchangeable terms. SRM informs decision makers about potential hazards, risks, and means to reduce risk associated with a particular NAS change or existing safety issue and facilitates communication and coordination across FAA organizations for enhanced safety risk decision-making. The SRM process is formally initiated by NAS changes and existing safety issues. A NAS change is a modification to any element of the NAS that pertains to or may affect provisioning of the following services. Air traffic management, communication, navigation, and surveillance. Existing safety issues are existing causes, contributing factors, or findings that led to or may lead to an unsafe outcome. It is important to note that the SRM process is not used to approve a change to the NAS. Rather, the SRM process serves to simply inform decision makers about the potential hazards, risks, and means to reduce the risk associated with that change. An SRM panel is convened to analyze and assess potential safety risks associated with a NAS change or existing safety issue. When necessary, they also identify a means to reduce that risk and develop a plan to measure the effectiveness of the risk management strategy utilized. The composition and size of an ATO SRM panel and the duration of the meeting is dependent upon the type and complexity of the NAS change or existing safety issue. Each SRM panel attendee will fulfill one of the five roles as outlined in ATO SMS policy. Change proponent, an individual, program office, facility, or organization with the FAA that has identified the need for SRM or has proposed or is sponsoring a NAS change or means to address an existing safety issue. Facilitator, co-facilitator, a trained expert on the SRM process who moderates the deliberations of the SRM panel participants from a neutral position. Communication, coordination, and preparation between the change proponent and facilitator or co-facilitator is important for the success of the SRM panel. Panel member. An FAA employee or other representative, as specified in the FAA Memorandum of Agreement, who objectively performs the SRM process. Note, this is inclusive of federal contract tower employees or other contractors who have been given explicit authority to represent, that is, make decisions for, speak on behalf of, the FAA. This includes FAA Bargaining Unit Representatives or Department of Defense DOD Representatives. DOD participates as a panel member when DOD air traffic control procedures and or airspace are impacted. Subject Matter Expert an FAA employee or third-party stakeholder who serves as a technical expert on the NAS change, procedure, hardware software, or proposed solution undergoing SRM. Panel Observer An individual who is not part of the SRM panel meeting and does not participate in the deliberation process. 
he or she only observes the proceedings for informational purposes. As an executive or manager, you will be asked to delegate organizational representatives to serve as members of a panel. When making a delegation, it is important to understand the roles of a panel member. In order to actively participate in panel proceedings, members will be expected to be familiar with and understand the NAS change and current system state, have experience with the SRM process and attended SRM training, understand pre-panel material and data, understand the controls that currently mitigate risk, have the ability to represent their group's viewpoint to determine the best path forward, and understand management's view on what is an acceptable and achievable mitigation strategy. It is essential that the delegated employee have expertise on the panel topic. Managers and executives may need to reach out to internal or external stakeholders at any time and must feel comfortable doing so. Stakeholders can be FAA employees, FAA bargaining unit representatives, federal contract tower employees, DOD representatives, and operators and service providers. Without including all affected stakeholders, critical safety issues might be overlooked, some risk management strategies might not be considered, and inappropriate risk levels might be assigned. It is essential for FAA executives and managers to prioritize safety while promoting a positive and proactive safety culture with all stakeholders. You must consistently strive to support and strengthen the existing safety culture. The ATO's safety culture must adhere to the following standards. Reporting and just culture provides an avenue for employees to identify safety concerns, ensures that employees feel comfortable and safe from punitive action when reporting hazards, incidents, and concerns, supports voluntary safety reporting programs that allow frontline employees to confidentially report incidents or safety concerns within the NAS. Learning and informed culture utilizes lessons learned from past events to mold future decisions, optimizes safety intelligence to identify trends, and analyzes safety intelligence and advises decision makers to ensure data-driven decisions are made. Finally, a flexible culture adapts to new entrants in the NAS and changing demands and adjusts to gathered safety intelligence. Ultimately, Safety must be made a priority in an effort to avoid catastrophic consequences, such as the Deepwater Horizon disaster. On April 20, 2010, 50 miles off the coast of Louisiana in the Gulf of Mexico, an explosion ripped through the BP Deepwater Horizon oil drilling rig. The blast killed 11 people and injured many more. Over the following years, several committees investigated the causes of the disaster, including a president-appointed commission and the United States Coast Guard. Both reports described the sequence of events that occurred on the Deepwater Horizon oil rig that day. The hydrocarbon pressures in the well increased, causing backflow onto the rig. Then, the blowout preventer failed, which stopped the well from properly sealing. Without that seal, oil and gas flowed non-stop from the well to the rig. The escaping methane gas ignited, and the rig exploded. The oil spilled from the well for 87 days before BP successfully capped the well. In total, the well released approximately 5 million barrels of oil into the Gulf. The spill threatened the livelihoods of thousands of people and inflicted damage to precious habitats and wildlife that took years to repair. Why did this happen? In the Presidential Commission's final report, Deepwater, the Gulf Oil Disaster and the Future of Offshore Drilling, the Commission concluded that the Deepwater Horizon disaster could have been prevented and revealed such systemic failures in risk management that they place in doubt the safety culture of the entire industry. 
The Coast Guard reported similar findings stating in Deepwater Horizon Volume 1 that the accident occurred because of serious safety management system failures and a poor safety culture. The Coast Guard report indicates that the Deepwater Horizon and Transocean, the owner of the well, had an extremely compromised safety culture. The investigation showed numerous safety deficiencies, including code violations, a poor maintenance record, and a history of safety incidents. Transocean failed to ensure that the management team and crew had sufficient training and knowledge to take full responsibility of the vessel. And they failed to require that the systems in place and the personnel emphasize maximum emergency preparedness. The devastating oil spill on the Deepwater Horizon did not have to end 11 lives and cause significant harm to the Gulf ecosystem. Both reports recommended that in order to protect human safety and provide environmental protection in the future, the oil and gas industry must create a new approach to risk assessment and safety management and support a more robust safety culture. Like the oil and gas industry, the civil aviation industry must stay focused on safety and be diligent about managing risk. The ATO established the safety management system to provide a formal and proactive approach to system safety. It is your responsibility to understand the ATO SMS and support a robust safety culture to keep our operations safe. In order to prevent a disaster similar to Deepwater Horizon, you must promote a robust safety culture and ensure that safety is deeply rooted in your organization's everyday work. You can do this by providing clear policy direction, promoting non-punitive communication, modeling desired behaviors, and allocating adequate resources in support of the SMS. Successful implementation and continuous improvement of the SMS requires acceptance from all levels of the organization including employees and stakeholders. Every employee should recognize the inherent value of the SMS and their role in supporting it. Executives should ensure that their organization's management is encouraging employees to participate in safety programs and initiatives. In summary, executives and managers are responsible for understanding the importance of the ATO's SMS and specifically SRM. The ATO SMS is a roadmap to ensuring system safety in the NAS. The ultimate goal of the ATO SMS is to maintain an acceptable level of risk within the ATO's provisioning of air traffic management and communication, navigation, and surveillance services. SRM informs decision makers about the potential hazards, risks, and means to reduce risk associated with a particular NAS change or existing safety issue and facilitates communication and coordination across FAA organizations for enhanced safety risk decision making. The ATO strives for continuous improvement of our SMS through communication and coordination with our safety stakeholders. For questions regarding SMS policy application or recommendations for changes to SMS policy, please contact 9-AJI-SMS at FAA.gov.